Good morning. She chilly one. We got a uh, one below zero right now. It was about four below zero when the propane ran out last night. I was trying to see what this little heater could do, and she went through all the propane in that one can. So at middle of the night, I went out and switched them over, and then got her going again. And it's 44 degrees in here with that thing on high. Gonna drive some coffee in me, get some traps set up for big northern pike, and then come back and cook up some breakfast while those traps are soaking. Got two live bait and three dead bait to, to soak today. We'll see which ones work better. That was the sixth night in a row on the ice out here. Trip's going pretty well, a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of people on this trip doing solo camping, but uh, getting to see a lot of people each day coming in to fish or going out to try to catch some other fish. We got two big live shiners that the boys from Vermont caught on rod and reel for us yesterday. I'm gonna deploy them, see how they do. I like live bait better. I've been trying dead bait this trip, but I think live bait's always better. All right, let's go. It's a beautiful morning out here. Let's get this thing fired up. I love it. Never gets old. bit of a bite this morning. Let's see how everything's gonna work today. Like butter. That's what we're into for live bait right there. Giant goldens. This one was caught on a rod and reel yesterday. So, about halfway between the eye and the dorsal fin on him. That's about a nine, nine and a half inch shiner. Let's get him down. He's gonna go where he wants to go. All right, I'm going to show you guys the rubber band trick when you're using big bait that could trip your your setup, your tip ups or your jack traps. So, got a rubber band on the bottom there. I'm going to lift it up. I got a fold. I'm going to tuck the fold underneath that rubber band so it's pinched. So, the bait is working against that right there. When a pike hits, he rips it out of that, and then he's got free spooling so he doesn't feel anything, any resistance, and can can run and he won't drop the bait. So that's how you set it up. Had to reach in the bucket and get that shiner out because my net's frozen solid. Oh. 
as you can see, I like to clear all the slush away from the hole when it's wet because as soon as that freezes, it it's real grabby on your line. So I got it away from the hole. So that way when I'm fighting a big pike and I get him up to the hole and then he takes all the line back, the line won't shouldn't get hooked up on, on any of that slush that's frozen around the hole. Well, we got one in. A couple more to go. Let's show you guys one more time, tucking that in that big bait man. Gets a little different angle on this. Put a fold, then if you put it in the corners, it's even tighter. And that's set just like that. The rest of my dead bait that I had in my jet sled, or the rest of my dead bait that I had in my sled last night froze a little too solid to use. So luckily I vacuum sealed some the other day and they're in my shack and shouldn't be too frozen. So we'll get those, open them up and use them. That's just a beautiful jack trap right there. That's their burnt ash charred. Beautiful. I like that one. there for a minute. Just shoveling this slush away could be the difference between catching a 20 pounder and losing a 20 pounder. On a cold day, that slush is going to harden like today. And not only is it tough to, to kneel on it when you're trying to catch the fish, when you're laying your line out, it gets caught in it like crazy. It's sticky. It's like Velcro. So when that fish has got to make a run and he's got to take some line, you could have a snap off if you're hung up on the ice and you could have a mess. So that's one little piece of advice when you're big fish fishing. Always double check your knots, your leaders, everything. Because you're one flag away from catching the biggest fish of your life. It's got to be the way you look at it. So it's fishing guys and I know it's not a perfect science but I found that the big pike, the really big ones, feed between about 9.30 and 2.30. I don't know if it's a light thing or what it is, but on several different bodies of water where I fish pike, that's when I've caught my biggest pike in general. Now, there's always those anomalies. There's always, it's always fishing. You could catch one right at dark. You could catch one first thing in the morning, but I like to get my trap set up first thing in the morning so they're set, ready ready for them, could catch that anomaly, and at least are good to go for when 9.30 comes around and I got no trouble. And then, you know, anything before then is a bonus fish, is what I figure, and then, then once you hit that magical time slot, then it's game on, and, and I fully expect to be getting some good bites out here.
had to run back and get a battery pack for the GoPro. Now, she's going. Okay, we got something on. Whoa. Look at that. She just, just took a run. Run like that, you could usually set. Oh, just pulled it right out of its face. Didn't feel very big, but what a bummer. What a bummer. Dang it. Maybe I should have let him eat. Easy to second guess. Wicked bummer, you hate missing fish, but felt like it might have been a hammer handle trying to eat that giant shiner. Let's see if he comes back. All right, it's uh, about 8, 8.30. We're gonna go in and cook up some breakfast. Get a full belly before we gotta go start pulling some big pike tops on. Oh, it's nice in here. Fans. Oh, sweet! We saw your truck over there yesterday, and I see you had a big group. Oh, nice! Well, Benjamin, you want to check this one? It might just be laying there, but it doesn't look good. Well, it took, it did take some wine. You know how to do it. You got steel leader too, so you can, you can horse on them if you need to. You guys are on camera. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Fans might not be, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he took a little bit, so it wasn't just a perch. Sometimes they turn around. Feeling any bait at all, Benjamin? Yeah. No. Oh, he stripped me. Yep. Yeah, I had live bait. Sean hooked me up with yep. a bunch. He came out the first day out here. He did, yeah. Yeah. When did you uh, first come out? I think I've been here about six nights. Have you really? Yeah. Oh, he's going down. What? He's going down, buddy. He's going, buddy. He's making power. Are you ready? Uh, this one had a big, uh, small dead bait on it. So, yeah, I don't know which direction it was going, but when I when I kicked the ice, it, it started going. So you could take it whenever you want. He's taking some wine, looks like. Yeah. You got him? Feel big? He's heavy. Heavy? He's oh, coming nice. to the hole. <laughs> you let me know if you need any line back. A lot of times those big ones will come right at you and then they start fighting at the hole. All right, there's your bottom marker. You fish them mostly on bottom? Though. Yeah, uh, within a foot or two. There you go. Little hammer handle. <laughs> yes, sir.
Well guys, I think I'm gonna take a load out of here, back to the truck, and start really slowly packing up for this trip. I'm gonna fish the rest of the day, and still have the, the tent and the floor and table and stove and all that stuff to take apart later while I'm still fishing. But I'm gonna run a load back. Got a full load right here.
All right, camp's all picked up and clean. Gonna pick up the traps and that's gonna be it for this trip.